Hello fellas and fellettes, apparently. So in the last video I said I was going to completely overhaul my UI and that is exactly what I've done. But I'm going to keep you waiting on that because I've got some other cool stuff to show you first. I did some good work on my character's AI, finishing off the tavern package. So now at a certain time when they go to the tavern, they'll pull out a drink and start drinking from it. Bloody hell mate, I think you need to slow down. I've also given them a new little wandering behaviour, so between two times they'll go out and just have a little explore. And you know, I think it gives them a bit of extra life and it takes them away from their, um, their alcoholism. So after I sent my characters off to the Alcoholics Anonymous, I went on a big old optimization spree. I started off with the trees, because when you create a new world in Sundermead, it will create all the trees at once. And generally, it will spawn around 25,000. And this was causing a massive performance bottleneck because the network solution that I'm using has to loop through each of those 25,000 trees every single frame. And in case you didn't realize, looping through 25,000 objects every single frame is not a good idea. Yeah, that's like half of my frame time right there. To fix this, I had two options. The first was to write my own entity spawning system that will work across the network on top of Mirror, or I could jump into Mirror source code and deal with it that way. But as a software developer who relies too heavily on NuGet packages, I don't like the idea of having to go into a package and edit it because the way I see it, it's like that for a reason. So I decided to go for the first option. All right, public class entity manager. Oh, you know what? I can't be bothered. I said Quack. it and into mirror I went. And I think the results speak for themselves. The network loop is now three times faster, yielding a 50 FPS boost. The next performance boost came from my Auroras, which looked like eh. I was playing around with some settings and I decided to turn them off and I noticed I got about a 40 FPS boost, which considering that is what they look like, that's not great. So we decided to strip them out entirely and replace them with an asset I got in the asset bundle that I also got Crest in. And if you don't know what Crest is, well, there's a, there's a video up there. Go watch that one. Just one quick thing before I get onto the UI changes. I've signed Sundermead up to the Steam Next Fest, which runs from the 3rd till the 10th of October, and in that time you'll be able to play a demo of Sundermead entirely for free. You'll be able to get it on the Steam page, but since you're there, why don't you go and leave a little wish list? You could leave a like and a subscribe too, just saying. I've also started a Patreon with four tier with four tiers, each giving different benefits. The higher tiers will give you access to testing early versions of the game as well, if you want to do that. So it's there if you want to give me your money, no pressure, but for the last year and a half of Sundermead's development, the UI has been using Unity's default elements, which look very grey and boring, to the point where I've even had comments on my videos saying how crap it looks. I wanted to get this sorted before I had any build available to the public, so I thought this was really the best time to get it done. So I started off by brainstorming exactly what I wanted. After my redesign of my website, I thought I might want something similar to that with the kind of wood style. In the end, I came up with the idea of panels, things in the background being made of paper, and any buttons or anything in the foreground being made of wood. And I made sure to post each of these updates in my Discord server so anyone could leave feedback in real time. And then a miracle happened. Someone in the server suggested I swip the elements around, so wood in the back and paper in the front. And voila, that's Sundermead's design language done. Now I just had the arduous task of updating every single element in the game. I'd also wanted to get a little sundial into the game for a while and being it was a UI overhaul, thought this was the better time to do it. So how it works is the sun and moon rotate around a pivot and then get masked off about halfway to represent sunrise and sunset. The moon is also slightly separate from the sun, so that way it represents where it is in the sky and what cycle it's in, so full moon, half moon, so on. Speaking of day-night cycles, in my last video I asked you all what you thought of my Stardew Valley-esque sleeping system where it would force you to go to sleep around 2am. Well, it seemed pretty universally disliked, so I stripped it out entirely. Now you can stay up for as long as you want. In the future, I'm gonna add difficulty settings, so if you've been awake for over a certain amount of time, your stamina will start to drain, and that debuff will then be reverted once you go to sleep. I also had to update the crops and lots of other things to work with the new sleep system, or I suppose, lack of sleep system. This is the third video where I've mentioned my skill system, and I finally properly got it done. The last one I had to do was mining, and you get XP for that from, well, mining. 
I won't go through all of the skills because I did that in the last ones and watching it back, it was kind of boring. So I'll leave a link in the description to the wiki so you can look through the skills there and what you unlock and everything and how that works. And the final thing I wanna talk about is the new map item. It was inspired by the Antique Atlas mod for Minecraft and I'd had this plan for a while, but I thought now was the best time to get it in given the next best demo and this would be when everyone would be first seeing the game properly. At the moment, you can only zoom in and out, but in the future, I'm gonna make it so you can pan around I just haven't decided how I want to handle distant objects yet. And that is where Sundermead is at. So recently I uploaded a little trailer to promote the next best participation. So you can go ahead and watch that next if you want. And don't forget, I'll be streaming on the 8th of October for the next best, where I'll be playing through the Sundermead demo. So come join me and have a chat there if you fancy it. Thanks again, and I hope to see you in the Steam Next Fest.